listen, just just edit this out, and then we'll just we'll just start uh, working <laughs> start on start the podcast now. <laughs> All right. So what's going on, boys? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> y'all ready to get some food in tonight? <laughs> <laughs> I know Justin, you're doing it the right way. You're going to go train right before dinner. I just like finished training. I'm gonna have like probably you know another meal at least before we go to dinner. But well, my 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 food schedule's been all over the place because uh, even like I think I lost like seven pounds in the last four days <laughs> just because <laughs> like I go I come out from the the visits I did and then I I I go to the Airbnb and the weird thing is that it's the first time I've never done this, but the Airbnb that I booked is with other people. So oh. like you, like we have kind of like a shared kitchen. We all have our, our separate bedrooms, obviously. Yeah. But we all share like this space where there's like two bathrooms and there's like, um, like a, a shared space for the, the kitchen. In a common area. Yeah. Yeah. So it's weird. So like when I come in, like last night I came in and then they were playing like dice. <laughs> like I kind of like got into that and then you kind of forget about your uh your stuff and whatever so I, I ended up going to bed at like three in the morning because I tried to like get a little bit of food in you know because it was kind of fucked up with the schedule and like I'm like oh fuck man like yeah that's that's funny man yeah, yeah I, actually one time we booked an Airbnb and I didn't realize that that could actually happen that you could book one and there could be like another guest booking that same place at the same time and if you don't like, uh, I think because we booked one that had three bedrooms and we booked all three, but not knowing okay. that if we only booked two, then someone else could have booked the other one and someone just would have been like chilling there with us. <laughs> like, we're just like, literally, because, you know, obviously you guys know, like we fucking just pose in the middle of anywhere, like basically like butt ass naked. And like when we're like shaving and stuff, like we don't give a fuck. But if someone else was just walking around the house, that would be really awkward. You know, uh, it was for a show. Yeah, it was for a show. It was when we went to the New York Pro. So like, it was just like in this random house, and we're like, oh, because it, it was, it was, it was. Um, when we walked in, we saw signs, and it was like, oh, something about like, you know, share the common area. We're like, common area, like, then yeah. isn't this just you know for us? And it's yeah. like, oh no, no, like, <laughs> someone else could be here. We're like, oh shit, good thing they're not. Yeah, it's it, it creates a kind of like, I don't know, it's it's just weird because I've never done it like this. So like. Obviously, when you come out of the shower, you can't have like your dick hanging out, you know. Like you have that's to, what I mean, yeah, yeah. You have to like, be a little bit more uh, courteous, and not it's, it's, even just like being, like we're used to just like having our chest out, or whatever. But it's just now, like there's old people there and whatever. I'm not like I try to be a little bit more mindful of it, you know. Yeah, it could it could shock people if they've never seen that before, you know. Well, uh, yeah, or just like I don't know, like yeah, <laughs> you have a guy there and you have his, his wife. That, I don't know, it's weird, you know. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, <laughs> or you you know you, you book a romantic weekend with your girl, you go there, there's just like a random dude, like what's up? He just like <laughs> well, I mean, on the couch. I mean, if you're booking a romantic night, I don't think you would like make sure that there's like other people. <laughs> yeah, hundred <100%. laughs> percent. Close, you know. Like, yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Wait, where are you right now? Are you just like chilling at the gym, or what are you saying? Yeah, I'm literally at the gym. Oh, so you're just gonna tra- you're just waiting to train after this podcast? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, because no, because if I wait, if I was at the Airbnb and then I had the 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 there's I'm not far from the gym, but it's still like the traveling, and then I have to go. Um, we're we're still going to supper after, so it's like I just want to make sure, like as soon as I get off, I go to train, and then I'm I'm off. You know, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Oh, nice. So, uh, what do you what do you plan to do for your leg day today? You just do one leg day a week or two, or I do one day, one leg day every, yeah, five days. Yeah. So like every, once a week, yeah, because okay. it's it's I, lately I it's been rare that I've been like on like five days. Um, mm-hmm. I kind of skip days sometimes. It's like I said, it's been all over the place. So it's I've I've even considered like cutting my my cycle like off short because it's just like I'm not like I should be so. I might as well just cut it, and then when I'm going to be here, I'll be able to, like, really start something and, and actually grow, you know? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, you could you could get, like, a little growth spurt in, take a little break, and then do a bigger one. I think you, that's what I'm yeah. going to do, yeah. And yeah, especially if I want, I don't know if I'm going to compete next year, but if I do, you know, that's what I was talking with Morgan, probably, like, end of 2025. Mm, okay. Like, earliest, probably Vancouver. Fall? Like like before like the Olympia or like after the Olympia? No, before uh I'll see, man. I would like yeah. before. Like I would yeah. like to see like maybe like 
earliest I think would be Vancouver. Right, right, right. Yeah. Like July, so, like that uh, that other stretch of shows. Like not at first, I wanted to do like Detroit, New York, Toronto, yeah. but I think that's going to be too too close. So I think I'll do the opposite. I'll do Vancouver, Texas. I think Texas is in the same same type like of like uh, two weeks after ish, two three weeks. Yeah. What, what's what's after Vancouver, Texas, or is it uh, not um, Chicago? Chicago's before. Yeah. Okay, Chicago yeah. could be a good a good one too. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Tampa as well. Yep. Tampa as well. Tampa. Yeah. Like kind of have different levels of shows for my, my pro debut, I think is going to be good to kind of have like smaller shows. Then you have bigger shows like Texas is a bigger show. And then like um, Tampa depends who shows up. But like, I think like Vancouver is obviously usually like a smaller show because guys have been competing for the New York, uh, yep. Detroit, Toronto and then the other one seven weeks later. So I think people take it either do before Vancouver or after, you know? Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Skylar? Are you planning, uh, obviously you're planning on competing this year or the year coming up? Yeah, honestly, it's probably going to be the exact same timeline for me. I was eyeing up pretty much the exact same shows. Uh, I all depends on how the next couple That's months cool. go, whether I'm able to speed it up and potentially look at something in the spring, but Ideally, I was looking at like July and August for sure. That could be cool. Um, yeah. yeah, rematch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I wanted to ask Justin. Objectively speaking, like what what do you feel you need most over the next few months to compete in the summer? Because I feel like you have a great amount of size already that you could, if everything's in line, turn it up for the spring pretty easily. I just, I just don't feel like the off the off season that I had in the last stretch. I made enough. So look, I'll probably be competitive. Okay, like mm -hmm. maybe potentially be able to do a top five, mm -hmm. but I don't know. I just I I feel like there's still more size to be added to my back, and but that's always going to be the case. Like there's always going to be stuff that I'm so I I just think. I, I have to go into it, try it, and then from there evaluate if I'm that far off from what I think. Because I do know that, like, even last last prep, I was just like, oh man, I'm 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 even too small to turn pro. And then when I got on stage, I was like, I'm the biggest guy there. So it's like <laughs> I know objectively I don't see myself. So I don't know, man. I, I kind of had an idea of weight and condition that I wanted. And like I wanted to be in around the three forties at like the same condition I'm now, mm -hmm. and I think I pretty much got there. It's just that now sometimes I'm when I'm like a week like today, I'm a little bit off. So like this morning I was yeah. like maybe like three thirty three, you know, and then I'll but I'll have a couple string of days that I'll be good and I'll be back to three forties. So mm -hmm. it's just been kind of like up and down. So it's just a consistency thing, man. It might look. When I'm when I'm back in in like Toronto, like permanently, I might be so on my stuff that I'm like, okay, you know what? Boom, I'm I'm good for Vancouver, and I'm I'm like I'm gonna be I'm gonna yeah. be ready, you know. It's just yeah. now I I just it's hard to kind of put my head into it when you know you're not a hundred percent, you know. Yeah, I that's, feel like I when you all, think... yeah, go ahead, Skyler. I know I was gonna say I feel like that's exactly gonna be the case. I feel like once you string together like two three months where like, like you're really in a rhythm, especially being around like guys like us. You'll surprise yeah. yourself, and then you'll get yeah, like, yeah. the itch yeah. to jump right in. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's yeah. that's it's 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 something I'm not necessarily putting away. I think that it's very possible that when I'm going to come down here, I'm going to start training with you guys and just like you know do a couple posing sessions with uh, with uh, Carl and whatever, and then I might be like, you know what, forget what I thought. I'm just going to go in Vancouver and you know see what I can do. Yeah, that's very possible. Very very possible because it's I think. Once uh, I see my physique change so quickly when I'm on, like when I'm, it could take like two weeks and my physique is just like, I look so much fuller and like everything looks there. And then when I look at myself like that, I'm like, okay, boom, 2025, I'm ready, you know? And then yeah. I'll have a couple of weeks that I'm like, yeah, a little bit off. And then I'm like, fuck man, I'm just going to wait till next year, you know? So <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's, it's, I don't know, man. It, we'll, we'll I'll see. I'll see. I, I don't, I don't necessarily cut it. I, I think, once I'm going to be here, it's going to be more objective to kind of make a decision, mm -hmm. and and then yeah, I'll also decide what I what I want to do as well as terms of 
Um, do I do it myself? Do I, you know, I've, I've worked with Larry for uh, all my shows. Mm -hmm. The last few shows, uh, Wait, it was Larry kind of who? like more difficult because he wasn't with me at all because I was in Vancouver and mm -hmm. whatever, and I was kind of doing my thing over there. Larry um, who? Larry Vinette. Oh, Larry Vinette. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah so he, he, he worked with me the whole time, like from my first men's physique show to my last show that I did, you know, so we worked together for 12 shows. So yeah, I'll, I'll see, I'll look at him with him. I think he's, he also changes direction. I think he's not doing as much bodybuilding as he was before. He's doing a lot more like um, uh, guys that are a little bit older, getting into their forties, fifties and sixties, like kind of getting their, their health in check and all that stuff. So he kind of like changes his uh his approach to coaching so it's it's something i'm going to talk with him and i've had you know conversations here and there with um other coaches as well mm -hmm. um but i i didn't i didn't really that's what i was telling because we I, I talked about this with dorian and i'm like i didn't really make any decisions on i because i even at one point i said oh you know maybe i'll, I'll do a season by myself i don't think i'll do that because i I know how I am and I just, I, I've done kind of, the Vancouver show was kind of like a showing myself what, how I am when I'm only coaching myself. And I just try to like drive myself to <clears throat> go down, 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 down and get really, really crisp. And yeah. I found that my Vancouver look, even though it was probably my most conditioned look, I was very, very flat in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. So I kind of, I think I sacrificed a lot of like fullness even though I came up with the same weight as as Toronto, I think I could have had a better look because I really, really drove myself. And I just I was so scared of spelling out because that's what I did in Toronto that I just said, you know what, I'm just gonna just keep the size because I'm I'm gonna be the biggest guy there. I just wanted to make sure my condition's good. It was it was good, but it's just like I feel if I would have jumped in a pro show, I would have looked too stringy, you know? Mm, yeah. Yeah. It's it's hard, man. Like cause when you have a coach that knows your body, like when you've had Larry your whole career, basically, yep. it makes a lot of sense to kind of just work with him, even if his ideas have changed, but just having him as that set of eyes, because mm -hmm. you can do most of that prep yourself probably until a certain point where you just kind of get delusional and then you need someone to kind of keep you on track from going crazy. And that's like, you know, maybe like the last four weeks, but it's on the other hand, it's like the only other option you really have is to hire a brand new coach from scratch. And ideally, you'd want to do that sooner than later so they have that opportunity to work with uh, your body over that, you know, maybe a little bit of that yeah. off season before you start prep. So it's like one or the other, you know, it's like that comfort thing. You've had that coach, he knows your body, but then it's like, is the grass greener on the other side? Is there going to be that, maybe that one extra opportunity for learning that this new coach could provide me that my old coach didn't? So there's always like that debate that a lot of these bodybuilders go on in their minds and yeah, I feel like at the end of the day, like that's what I mean. Like we know what to do. You just need that yeah. one person that you trust to basically, like you know, uh, you know, land this like, land the fucking yeah. thing at the end of the day, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But even even if like even if I would work with someone else, it wouldn't even be at uh, the reason wouldn't even be because oh it didn't work out with Larry or whatever. It's just because it's having a different approach and learning something new. That's the yeah. only reason why I would do that. Because obviously it it went well with Larry. I, I I turned pro. We did we did a lot of shows. We we started off like literally at the smallest class there is, you know, yeah. and then we got to the open the open category. So it's it's not that it didn't work. It's just if I would do that and switch, it would just really just be to have a different approach and having a different vision on what you know. The, the whole prep but also like the whole peaking process and everything everyone kind of has their approach and uh it could be beneficial as well for my own coaching you know it's 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 uh the more you know you know yeah you never of know right? what's up big mo what's going on nypd in the house yeah i've been on a couple <laughs> cop this whole time <laughs> shit man <laughs> yeah, could have pulled me bro <laughs> working, working on an intercontinental yeah stair Bust. Let me fucking hide all my shit real quick, bro. Just never mind this. Fucking... Oh, you're already busted, dude. Oh shit. <laughs> yeah. This thing is going down tonight at DC. Damn. I knew yeah. it. So knew it's it. a just a heads up. <laughs> uh Justin, are you guys talking about Justin's new coach or something? Oh, we were talking, yeah, we we're talking about uh he's debating whether he wants to switch coaches or not, essentially for the next season. Oh, okay. Is your current coach gonna watch this? 
on a what? Is your current coach, is your current coach going to watch this? He might. Be nah, he's too old school. No, no, no but we didn't, we didn't, we didn't really say that I was going to switch or not. It was just like, if if that ever happens, it's not because things didn't work out. It's just because it would have to be with a, a different approach. Uh, but it's like I was, I was saying, I worked with Larry for twelve shows, and it went really well. You know, I I don't have anything to say, and I learned a lot. Uh, it's just basically at one point you can't, I did, I did all my shows with him. I worked with him for, since I've been what, 20 and now I'm 28, going to be 29, you know? So at one point you kind of learned everything that you could and then having something else and another approach, another way at a peak, another, like that could be something that could be interesting. Uh, and also because that, that was what I was saying before, Larry, uh, kind of changed his approach. So all of this, I haven't necessarily spoken to him with, but it's going to be a conversation we're going to have to, to see if he, he still wants to do it as well. Cause I know that he kind of switched also his approach. I think he had me as, as coaching in bodybuilding and that's it. I don't think he had any more clients, you know? Yeah. So right on. Yeah. yeah. Better have that conversation with him tonight. Cause I'm going to post this tomorrow morning. So <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's, it's, it's not something necessarily that, I'm 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 very open about it and whatever. It's not uh I'm not I'm not even saying that I'm switching. I'm just putting things out there and and it's 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 a conversation that I'm necessarily gonna have with him and and see where he's at, you know, where where does does he stand in terms of uh bodybuilding if he still has the passion to do it and uh and then and then see what, what we would do, you know. Yeah. Cause I don't even know when I'm gonna compete as well. So it's not that's why I didn't really have a conversation with anyone. It, because I don't even know when that's going to happen or when I'm thinking about competing. Yeah. There's more of like a sense of urgency once you actually decide. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And I think all of this is kind of going to snowball when I'm actually here permanently, you know? Yeah. Uh, man, honestly, like, I feel like, you know, if, if the freaking Olympian, like the past couple of weeks has shown us anything, I feel like having a top name coach really is like, it's overrated. You know, like I said, like I, like before you jumped on, I was just saying like the most important thing is just having that set of eyes that you trust that can basically just help guide you in the last little bits of prep um, and just help you land that plane when you, you kind of need it. Right. Cause we know what to do. We're pro bodybuilders. We've been doing this for fucking long enough. We know how to get ourselves in shape, get ourselves big. Yeah. But, yeah absolutely. Know. Yeah. I've always said this. I think it's just important to have someone who's invested and like actually gives a shit and just mm -hmm. like, you know, follows you along with your prep, takes time to communicate with you, learn your body. Uh, and then if you do that for 16 or 20 weeks, it's and not necessarily should it shouldn't be easy to peak, but you guys should be able to figure it out together, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You could like have it's... the most knowledgeable coach, and if they're not equally invested at that given point in time, it clearly shows, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. You have all the knowledge in the world, but if they don't have the knowledge about your physique, <laughs> right, and how you respond to things and what it takes to load you, if you need to cut water, if you need to use diuretics, all of these things, uh, you know, it, it matters, you know. Yep. And that's, I think that's what a lot of people don't understand is that every time you switch coaches, it's starting all over again, where you have to now have this period of time where this person is learning your physique and that can take, you don't know how long it's going to take. It could take months. Yeah, man. I think we all know this because we coach, you know, clients that do shows, but like, you know, for me, I think the most vital time is like when you get that client, like to the point where they're in shape, like three, four weeks out and you start doing these like test carb ups and stuff like that, like that's so important. Like, you know, and you need to be paying such close attention to see how they're responding, how much food they can handle, how much water do they hold after a couple of high carb days, you know, all, all these types of things. And I think if you're a coach that is so busy, you have all these other ventures going on, it becomes really, really hard to to pay that close of attention. And I think that's why it doesn't always work out because these coaches get their clients in shape. Yes. But because they haven't been paying attention to those fine details, when it comes time to actually get ready for the show, it's just like guessing, you yeah. know? And that, uh, yeah. that, that sometimes, sometimes you get lucky and it works out, but you know, and it could be hard because if you're the coach and you've got stuff going on, you got kids, you got whatever going on in your life, but now, you know, you've got three athletes checking in and it's four weeks out. So they're all checking in every day. So you have multiple check-ins daily that you need to stay on top of. And there might be a week that you've strung together some days where it's like, you know, maybe you weren't fully present because you had other things going on that can happen. And that, that, off, that off, obviously it does happen, you know, like people aren't perfect. Um, yeah. But, you know, at the same time, I do think it is important for the athlete to uh, to be com communicative enough to voice their concern if there's a, a lapse in like a, a presence, I guess, because you could probably tell, right? It's like if there's a week that goes by, it's like, yeah, no changes keep going. It's like, 
I think we should make a change. Should we maybe do something or what do you want me to do? Or, Hey, you know what? At the end of the day, you can always just tell your coach like, Hey, listen, like, you know, can we do another check-in, you know? And like, I think we should, uh, you know, maybe get on a FaceTime if you don't, if you don't have them locally, or if you do, and you can meet up with them at the gym. Hey coach, can we like, you know, meet up at the gym and take a look at me? Cause Yeah. sometimes that's what you need, you know? That's the way it should be, man. I think Yeah. a lot of these coaches forget who the boss is, you know, Yeah. like the client hires you, Yep. right? Like you're, you're, you're doing the job for them. It's like anything else. Like if I hire someone to build my house, like I got a, I got a lot of say in what, and how my house is being built. Like, you know, and if, imagine if you had someone building your house and they're like, you're like, I want my bathroom this way. And they're like, Hey, you know what? Actually, we're going to do it this way. Don't give a shit what you think. You'd be like, what? Like, I'm, you're going to fire that person. Yep. You know what I mean? So coaches need to check themselves, I think, too. You know, if you're going to coach people for a show, coaching lifestyle clients is one thing, right? Coaching someone for a show, you need to, like, have yourself in a situation where you can coach someone. And if you can't, if you have other shit going on, just be honest with that person. Don't don't make false promises and get them to two or three weeks out, and then you have no fucking idea of how to peak them because you haven't been paying attention or you haven't done things properly. Like, you know what I mean? So I, I think all, a lot of coaches, I mean, okay, if you want to say, You know, I have team Morgan Mac Nutrition. I never say that, but like I know a lot of coaches like have their team, right? But it's like, man, like you're on the client's team. They're not on your team. Like it's not a fucking team sport. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's you're just not an illusion. all at once. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Coaches are, I think these days are taking a little bit too much credit, you know, for uh for, for everything that's going on there. So I, I think some of these guys honestly just need to check themselves. And it would, it would be better for them if they did too. And do you, and what do you guys think? Do you think that the coaches are taking too much credit? Or do you think the athletes are not taking enough accountability sometimes, you know? I, I think that some coaches, obviously not all, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's it's totally okay to post your client and be like, you know, this is my client. They did great. Like, you know, uh, but like, man, like I, I see some coaches that shows that like the fucking, they're not even out the door of the show and like they're posting, you know, like, like they did everything. Right. And it's like, just maybe just chill out a little bit. Maybe let the client make a post about their show. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? And take a couple of days and be like, oh, shout out to my client. Competed last weekend, killed it. We did some really good work together. Super proud of them. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think some people are just like too quick to just use like that person as like advertising and, and instead of just appreciating and like being in the moment with them, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, talking about coaching, so like all this drama happened with the coaching stuff, like you know, with Quentin and Nick and and Matt Jansen. So, what do you guys think? Like, like why did all these guys leave Matt all at once? Do you think was was it really because Matt, you know, dropped the ball all in the same timeline, or is it just because they were holding on to it because they were waiting for someone else to leave first? Me personally, I honestly think it's as simple as what he put it. I think it's he lost a bit of the passion for bodybuilding coaching, and it might have shown along the way this year with a few different people, but I, I think that's as simple as it is. I don't think like everybody started feeling some type of way and jumped ship all at once, and I definitely don't think that Quinton's video solicited that response either. I honestly do think like, over the years that I've seen him coach, he has been one of the best coaches available. And that's mm -hmm. undisputable. Whether that the claims made that he had uh, coaches working underneath him and if you applied within his program, you would be passed down to one of them. There's several people that do that in the industry. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do believe he is one of the most knowledgeable and has proven track record with some of the best guys, despite some negative uh, cases that have come with certain clients. I do believe he's one of the best coaches there has been in a long time. And I just think maybe he's ready to move on with his life a bit and uh, gave them the opportunity to essentially walk away without things necessarily negatively reflecting each client. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. You guys agree I with think, that? I think, I think honestly, like, because when I, when I looked at, uh, at Quint's video, I don't think, Even for Quint, I think a lot of what and I spoke I spoke to him as well. Like we 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 have talked about this. Like I think his whole thing was mostly the lack of accountability for what happened. Because mm -hmm. I mean, everyone misses it. it. Happens. You you he had he had never worked with Quint. Um, he, you know, like he maybe 
didn't didn't gauge him the right way and like he because i saw quint like eight weeks out of that of that prep and he was huge like really he looked really good and <clears> everybody was talking him, about him then yeah as long as soon as i saw him like a couple weeks later i'm like and i saw pictures i'm like okay maybe he's just flat and then he's gonna show up better at the show and then when he got at the show i'm like okay no that's exactly what i saw in pictures he had lost a lot of size mm -hmm. so at the end of the day after that saying that well okay you had fake gear i'm like listen the guy built his whole physique the whole year and then he just he didn't just switch at the end you know what i mean like that's i think that's what it is it's like the guys like like you said like i think he probably lost passion for bodybuilding a little bit he probably didn't or had too many things going on that he was trying to juggle everything and try to manage uh his clients and at one point maybe he figure out that fuck like i can't i can't manage all this and at the same time maybe he didn't have the love as he used to we all know like if you're not if you're not passionate about this stuff you're 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 cutting corners you're not necessarily like as attentive to all the little details and coaching is a lot about all these details you know mm -hmm. um so maybe that's what happened and then when that's i think that's the thing i think people are just upset of because quint is not the only one apparently that uh, has been told that that's what that was the reason why they weren't in shape not that he wasn't in shape it's just they didn't have the results that they were looking for is that he had fake gear and he said the same thing about nick it was like these guys it's not like maybe you had like a couple of amateurs that had fake gear but it's not it's not the majority you know what i mean like uh at the end of the day i think that's what people got a little bit of like they were a bit against about is like all coaches miss even honey i don't think that derek was at his best at the olympia yeah. but i don't think that he told derek hey listen i think your gate your gear was fake that's why you know we fucked up you know yeah. like he probably took accountability i don't know i never i didn't hear if he said anything but he probably could have took accountability talked to him and say look i think we kind of missed the ball here and you know next year is gonna, gonna be another year you know that's i think that's yeah. mostly what it is you know Okay, so so you so you think that it's mostly just because Matt wasn't uh, straight up about it in the beginning, like when well, when when Quentin I, first had yeah. that issue, he should have just been like, "Listen, man, like you know, I see that I've made it like an error here. We were looking really good up until this point. I think if we kind of reverse it out of here, and then if we try another season, I think we can get it right. I think Quentin, you know, would have you know regained his respect, but that makes sense. He kind of lost that respect because he, right. in his words, tried to gaslight him with the." Uh, the fake gear thing so well, that because, makes sense man for yeah sure. because yeah because if you because and, and look if you put yourself in in quentin's shoes and you're like okay well he knows he fucked up he knows what he has to fix to make me better okay mm -hmm. i'm 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 on board you know but if you're like no no everything went as planned it's just that your gear was fake it's mm -hmm. like you know that's not the case so it's like well now i don't really trust what you're gonna you're gonna say at the end of the day because you don't know what you're talking about and that's what i think that the video was about he's like mm. when i when he said he doesn't know what he's talking about i think that's what he meant he's like that's clearly not what happened you know so yeah, yeah. what do you what do you think mo is that is that what you think too is just just a matter of losing respect because they weren't honest when they should have been yeah pretty much i, I guess just like you know a lack of ownership uh and, and like from math you know, I think the, I think it just sucks because I agree with what Skyler said too. I think Matt was like fucking one of the best coaches that we've seen in the in the industry ever. Oh yeah, for sure. How many guys did he help turn pro? And like, how many guys were good mm -hmm. pros? You know, yeah. Shot Rita, Nick, like, yeah, you know. two, two, like yeah. I mean, for sure, like you can count more accolades probably than fails. Maybe if you count all the amateurs, maybe it's like equal. But it's like he has a pretty good track record. <laughs> you can't you can't deny that. That's for sure. And, yeah, uh, and, yeah. and a lot of these guys came up with him too. So there's also that, right? Yeah. I, I think he just messed up with Quint, like, you know, honestly. And I think he just didn't handle it uh, properly. Like when things didn't go right. Uh, Cause I've talked to Quint about this and like, you know, I, you know, he, he said everything already. So it's not like I'm saying anything that hasn't already been said, but I think, you know, in the off season, uh, Matt probably just like fed him way too much food and like pushed him way more than he needed to be like, Quentin is a freak. Like he doesn't need to get big and thick in the off season and put on size. And I think that just resulted in a really strenuous prep uh, that obviously caused Quentin to lose muscle and it sucked. But obviously, yeah, the fault on Matt there is just not taking ownership right away that he messed up and trying to gaslight Quint a little bit and say like he had fake gear and like all this kind of stuff. Like 
that's crazy, man. Like these days, like saying people have fake hair. And, and then like when it comes out that he said this to a couple other like elite clients when things didn't work out for them either. So I, I think unfortunately Matt just kind of put himself in a bad situation and then it got escalated. Uh, it probably all could have been avoided, you know, but, you but know, it, seems like, it seems like it's all kind of working out in the end anyway, because Matt's retiring from coaching. Yeah, uh, He's moving on with his life and, and, you know, like I, I saw his post, he wants to focus more on his family and kids and, you know, I got nothing but respect for that because sure. yeah, it's like super hard to own several businesses and do your own physical goals that he has and have kids and coach these high level bodybuilders. Like when you're coaching high level bodybuilders, it's almost the only thing that you can do. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. that's what I think. Yeah. That makes sense. And, and the one thing about, you know, the fake gear thing, I thought that was kind of funny because if you ever thought you had fake gear, you just get a blood test, didn't you? If yeah. my coach was like, hey, dude, you might have fake ear, I'd just be like, yeah, I'll get a blood test because it's going to show right away. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you would catch it. You would catch it early, yeah. too. It I've, only, I've, only like... ever had, I've only ever had one client, and he just wasn't making any progress at all. I'm like, man, you might have fake ear. Got blood work, and he had low tests. I'm like, you definitely have fake ear. It's, the only, it's like really the only way to know. And his test was low. I'm like, wow, that's really fake. <laughs> it's just straight up oil. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Got ripped off bad. He's like, yeah. I asked the biggest guy in the gym. I'm like, huh? <laughs> doesn't always work, man. <laughs> doesn't always work. <laughs> Especially when you go to like a fucking Planet Fitness, like the biggest guy in the gym, like, <laughs> you know, he's not. <laughs> anyway, uh, so we're on the topic of drama. So you know, Mo, you were at the gym the other day when, when all that shit went down with Mike and Mike and Jeff. So I, I only want to say one thing about it. Why is it so polarized? Why are people like going to war over this thing? Well, two, you, you couldn't have two more opposite influencers. You know. <laughs> Like Jeff yeah. is like science based, so polite, like well spoken, you know. And Mike is, you know, a hard ass, like hardcore guy, uh, big into just the, uh, you know, take juice, train hard. Obviously, he has his like intelligent training techniques, like you know. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but yeah, I, I think that's why. I think it's just because they're both so well known. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't. I wasn't there that that day, and you know what. I, I honestly think it's just an unfortunate situation. I don't think it should be blown so out of proportion because I think it's just humiliating for both people, to be honest, you know? Super, super, yeah. super shitty, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I, I don't know, man. Like, So I, I wasn't even there the day that it happened. I uh, I just kind of involved myself the, the next day. And and that's mostly because, obviously, like I'm not I'm not cool with like like bullying or like big guys picking on little guys. And, and Jeff's my friend. He's from where I'm from. And I've known Jeff. You know, I, I knew Jeff before anyone knew Jeff. You know, Jeff was like, when I met Jeff, he was a small dude, trained that good life, <laughs> like, like shoot hoops on the weekend, you know? So, uh, yeah, I, I just think, unfortunately, obviously, Mike's temper got the best of him. And uh, he made a really bad decision. And, I, I, and again, I think mostly, I think if Mike just pushed, like, me or, like, some other big guy in the gym that he might have had beef with, like, it, nobody would give a shit. Mm -hmm. but because he hit Jeff and Jeff has such a huge following and also Jeff is much smaller than Mike uh, and, and how Mike did it. Cause it's, it's not like Mike just like pushed Jeff like in the shoulder. He like hit him in the throat. Mm -hmm. And obviously like with the amount of force he did that with, like it's a really dangerous strike. Mm -hmm. um, you could, you could mess someone up pretty good with by doing that. So I think between that, like it being kind of a dirty blow and Jeff not expecting it, like it just uh, looked really bad, but you know, I, I've said this to so many people, like, like it really didn't have to be this way. Like these guys really could have just went back and forth on social media. They could have even did something like Mike takes Jeff through a workout. Jeff takes Mike through a workout and like film it. And like, they could have got so many like comments and views and like these things. Right. But <clears throat> obviously it didn't go down that way. Yeah. Um. So yeah, sucks. Yeah. I think that you made a good point. Having the experience as a black belt in karate and saying that, punching someone in the throat like that is a deadly strike. I think that's a real um, significant difference because as a claim to be clearing space for yourself, you would need to just push somebody, like you said, in the shoulder, in the chest, something that would be less lethal. Yeah. Because in, in that case, you're intending to harm someone, you know? Yeah, so exactly. Mike, Mike could have easily, I, I mean, if, if his claims were true, which they're not about him, 
trying to like feeling threatened. Like, come on, bro. Like you feel threatened by Jeff Nippard. Mm-hmm. Like Drake's Drake's old bodyguard. Right. Like, like that's bullshit. Right. I think that's, then, I think that's why it's another case of just, just owning up and being honest. Right. Yeah, and, and then, and then the fact that, okay, if, if that was true, you, you clearly made space with the first strike because Jeff flew back 10 feet, tripped over a bench and was on his ass. And then I don't know if you guys saw their surveillance footage. It's actually out now on YouTube. Somebody just released it, uh, which I don't think they were supposed to, but it's out. Uh, Mike continues to go towards Jeff. Jeff gets up and then Mike hits him in the throat again and then pushes him up half the gym. Right. So it's like, if you actually were just trying to make space, you would have did that in the first blow and then you would have fucked off. Yeah. But, but that's not what happened. So I understand where Mike's coming from because he obviously knows he made a mistake and he's trying to make what is now a legal situation not as bad for himself by by making yeah. those claims like most people would. Um, but at the end of the day, he fucked up. I'm sure he regrets it. Um, at the same time, though, it's 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 just good that it didn't. It, it's not any worse. Like Jeff could have hit his head. He could have fucked up his throat. Like it could be way worse for both of them than it is. Right. Yeah, because so, you're you're in a you're in a gym. There's so many things around. There's bars. There's there's even even just that that hook that you you kind of see it from the rock that was there. Like yeah. you hit your head there. Like it, it could have been really bad, man. Like, honestly, but look, I wasn't there. I can't really like. I don't know e- each e- either one of them, but it doesn't look good, you know. So I think honestly, all it was was just a really poor decision on Mike's part. And it just gained so much traction based off the fact that Mike looks like a typical bully. And that's just his like characteristics visually. And honestly, you're right. Jeff doesn't look like somebody who necessarily poses a physical threat to anybody. And he's never given off that impression. So it's just a really, really poor decision that made things look even worse. And I don't think that like either party is like, necessarily solely at fault but mike is definitely heavy at fault for this one and he kind of deserves what's coming to him yeah yeah i'd have to agree with you there um because i mean you know i i think i just don't think jeff expected this to happen because you wouldn't in the gym like you know but like you know in the surveillance footage like you guys will see it soon um like mike definitely instigates the thing like the whole thing right because Jeff is just there filming his YouTube video with his cameraman. Mike walked past him and says something to him. Um, after that happens, Mike goes to his client. Jeff takes like a couple steps towards Mike and asks him what did he mean by what he said. Yeah. And then Mike takes about five to six steps towards Jeff. Jeff has stopped walking at this point. Jeff puts his hands behind his back and then Mike hits him. I don't know if Jeff was just willing to take a punch or if he kind of knew deep down if his cameraman's on him, he can like intellectually outsmart him, make him look a little silly. But again, it's just a poor decision. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm sure, you know, if Jeff had his time back, you know, he probably would have just kept doing those curls (laughs) like, you know, and, Mm -hmm. and not, not, not approach Mike. So maybe that wasn't the smartest thing from Jeff to do that. Uh, but obviously, regardless of that, Mike could have just got in his face, told him to go F himself, stay away from me. Mm-hmm. And, and that could have been that. And nobody would have cared. Like, yeah. you know, so uh, big Q in the house. <laughs> What's, What's up, guys? dog? What's up, guys? What's We're hanging on? on. We're talking about the battle of Jeff Nipper and Mike Van Wick. <laughs> yeah. The war. The war, yeah. It's turned into a war. It's kind of pathetic, yeah. man. I guess you guys are talking about the leaked footage, yeah? No, I they don't even know. I just brought that up to them. Oh, they didn't know about it. Yeah. I didn't know about it. I was just I was just like looking at it right now. Can you put it up on the screen? I can. Is I don't know if this is the right one though. I was trying to make sure. Yeah, this is it. Hmm. Okay. So John Bravo got it. <laughs> yeah, how did he get it? <laughs> okay, so this is this is uh let me go to where it starts. It's like right about here. Mike says sup. 
So I think that I think that's false. I think that's where Mike said uh, things are about to get funny. Yeah, well, he was like looking at him, and he's clearly talking to him. So yeah, he's a little aggressive there. That's, yeah, that's definitely where it started. Now, now there's all this tension, right? It's like <laughs> that was just unnecessary to begin with. There's already a lot going around that Mike asked me to stay away from him and that I didn't listen and approached him first. This is false. And Pure Muscle and Fitness has security footage to prove it. I think they should release it. Okay, so the, yeah, this is the footage. Okay. So Jeff's on his bicep curls. Mike's working with his client. This guy's really going to bat for Mike here. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, that's that's like it's like when you watch those like murder shows. It's like, <laughs> it's like you don't really know who's at fault until the end, and you have to decide for yourself. But also, he's he's slowing it down and breaking it down, so it it makes it seem like there's a lot of time elapsed. It's like a, it could have been like ten seconds, yeah, you know, five reps. Then you put it down. Yeah, it was it wasn't a lot of time, and then he's he went to ask him the question, and yeah. Yeah, and honestly, like, you don't know what was being said there either. Mm. Mm. But, like, that was a fucking pretty aggressive throw, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, if you were Jeff, you'd be fucking shook by now, you know? Like, you're almost... Yeah. You know, like, you're you're pretty, you're pretty fucking traumatized by this point, like... Yeah, so I mean, it just doesn't look like Mike felt overly threatened there. No, <laughs> you know. yeah, irritated for sure, but not overly. Like it was, I like how it said the the cameraman leans into Mike, like he was just standing there, <laughs> and Mike yeah. literally shoved him into the machine. Yeah, yeah. See, the way this guy did the video, it seems like he kind of leaned in favor of Mike here, but yeah. bro, I mean, listen, I've said a lot already. I've spoke to Mike behind the scenes. Um, that's what I mean. It's like, why are people why are people going to bat for people over this? It's just it's just simple as day. It's like, hey man, someone made a mistake. They're gonna get you know, justice is gonna get served. He's not even allowed in the gym anymore, so that's a good thing. So I feel like people should just stop um, like polarizing it so much. You know, it's like just because someone's friends with Jeff or someone's friends with Mike. It doesn't mean there has to be like some kind of war or debate about it. It just, it just at this point, it's black and white, man. Yeah, but bro, that's the internet, man. That is yes. the internet. It's like they, as soon as there's something that's going to happen like this, people are going to run with it for sure, hundred percent. And of course, like, of course, it turns into like a meme, like twenty four hours later. Oh yeah, there's, there's going to be a ton of stuff made on it, and uh, there's always been there's been the the one I saw dancing and shit. That's funny, you yeah. know. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. <laughs> It's crazy. What what's up with bodybuilding? Like after the Olympic, just turned into like a fucking soapbox drama. Man, I feel bad for Quinn, Sam. Quinn started everything. Yeah, Sam, <laughs> Sam, 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 Samson wins the Olympia, and there's like no one is even like talking about him or that. It's just all this like other drama that's going on. Yeah, well, you know, some guy came forward and like I think he was spreading a rumor. I could be wrong, but apparently he was telling people he coached Samson. So he yeah. had that come up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah we talked that. about that uh, on the AMA podcast last night. So apparently, yeah, there was this guy that had helped, I guess, I don't know, this guy's just trying to take credit, but he had helped Samson and uh, Mar Marilenka. Is that her name? I think so, yeah. Yeah. So he was helping them with Samson's blood work. Uh, I think this guy worked for Merrick Health and uh going into the france show and then after the france show they dropped them and then did their thing at the olympia but yeah apparently this guy comes out of the woodwork after the olympia saying that he had helped samson with his like protocols or something like that and so but, did, but didn't they talk about that already like i i, I heard samson say that he was working with merrick so i don't know why this is like he was ongoing tagging him, and I believe he was basically helping them run the protocol and essentially yeah. But I, I thought that was already 
he, yeah, I thought that was already spoken. Like I think, and it, it was smart. Like the, from what I was hearing, like he had his whole blood work thing. He had this mm -hmm. whole like um, protocol made with the blood work that he was doing during prep, which is, you know, like it's, it's, it, but at no point did I feel like he was not giving Merrick their due. Like, I mean, no, he was tagging him in the posts and I don't even believe that uh, the guy came out and said that, uh, he was coaching him. I think he just like was uh, willing to take acceptance of publicity that came his way with people asking him if he had a hand in it. And I guess Samson took a bit of offense that his wife was being discredited a little bit, which I definitely agree with that. She played a huge part in that and definitely helped him get to that point. Um, but yeah, it's a silly situation for sure. Yeah, it sounds stupid. I, I could kind of understand why Samson would want to just kind of squash that though. You know, it's like, it's like, no, listen, like, I think we all know by this point, like she is really coaching me. Like there's no denying that. Let's just, let's just leave it there. Like this guy, clearly he was helping us at some point, but she was probably just like, Hey man, like, you know, it's peak week now, like for the Olympia, like we got it from here. And he was probably just like, all right, cool. But like you said, Skylar, like, you know, if you're basically getting some credit for it, you're not going to deny that because, you know, clearly he did do some work along the way and, mm -hmm. um, and they all play a part. Right. So it's like, okay, everybody gets a piece of the pie. I think that's all cool. Right. Um, yeah. there's, there's a, there's the lead coach. There's the guy that's helping you with the protocol. There's guys keep taking care of your health. You got opposing coach trainer. Cool. But, uh, but I didn't, I didn't see what happened, but did this guy just like, blatantly say like oh no i helped them or it's just because oh. it was out there and just someone took it to try to discredit her because i that's what i felt like it was like yeah. it was just like the guy kind of just he's part of it everyone knew he was part of it but now because she he said that she he was sorry samson said that his wife was coaching him now there's people that are trying to like figure out if that's actually what happened and this that and now I think things are kind of being thrown around, you know. I think I think behind the scenes that person may have told people otherwise, but in okay. public never said in public he's agreed with the with, okay. with what is really happened because I do believe that his wife coached him. Now listen, I've had people when I was doing preps that have chimed in and given advice as big, like, okay, thanks, but I did I never listened to it. People just chime me in. So I could totally see somebody from the outside that thinks they're giving you a certain amount of value, but you don't even know how much they're actually applying, you know? So hmm. you got to take shit like that with a grain of salt. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. I mean, I felt like it was like so much drama that it was almost like too much, you know, it's like, I think we should just focus on what bodybuilding is really about, which is just like enjoying training and fucking not pushing each other across the gym, <laughs> taking our aggression on the weights and not, not each other. <laughs> That's like kind of the whole point of it. But I, don't know. I think with this, I think with this leaked footage coming out of the surveillance stuff. Now we're going to be hearing about the Mike and Jeff thing for another week, probably. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Just, exactly. Yeah. 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 We got to stir up more controversy so that we could block that out. Yeah, no, what's the next thing? You got to think of something. <laughs> Quinn's something on a mission, next. bro. Quinn's yeah. on a mission, man. He's fucking like, we're going to find something. Q, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's fake fight, me and you. Yeah, let's, right. fuck, let's, <laughs> let's schedule a boxing match in the gym. Yeah. All right, we'll, we'll do it up. <laughs> no, we we got to set up a room that, that Q has a new coach. <laughs> <laughs> just, try to, just, just try to get everybody to figure out who it is. We'll just leave little clues. Like, Mike, we'll, Mike, Mike, Mike's Mike coaching Quint. Like Mike, Mike? <laughs> bro, in one, Mike? Of your posts, in one of your posts, just like tag boss. In another post, just <laughs> tag, tag another coach. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that would be so funny. Uh, oh, that would be funny. <laughs> all right, uh, let, let's do some questions. You guys want to do some questions? Switch it up a bit. All right, let's. Uh, if you guys ever used Yohimbi for contest prep? Yep. Yeah. You guys, you guys like it? Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, let, let, Skylar, what do you think? What do you think? Your, your experience with Yohimbi? Do you use it for contest prep, off season? Do you always? Uh, use it? Typically, I only would have used it in contest prep. I find it's a good stimulant in the morning, help aid the metabolism. Uh, I find personally, it could have a similar uh, effect as like an L-carnitine to a degree. 
Um, but again, it's kind of hard to get in Canada. So it's, it, it's beneficial to a degree. I've had some clients use in the past that like it. Um, but I'm not necessarily like the biggest fan of it. I just find it did serve a purpose. Mm. You, you, you think so Q think you'll be good. I mean, I use it for the first time during this recent prep and it was paired with T3 and also Clen. And I just remembered Yo Himbi on its own made me more anxious. Hmm. I mean, it, it felt like it, it worked as well, but that paired with the T3 and the clinic, like, all of them just gave me this crazy synergy of anxiety and stress. But I did get lean. <laughs> <laughs> too, too much. It was too much. Yeah. Trifecta is too much. Yeah, I don't know if I'd use it again, but it I think it's also good for sex drive. So that part of it was like that was like the added benefit. But yep. outside of that, I I think I could do without it. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do you use it, Mo, in your prep? I've never used it, man. For me, like, I don't ever I don't ever use, like, any, like, fat burners, really, or anything like that when I'm in, in prep besides, like, Clen and T3. Mm. Like, in my mind, I'm like, okay, if I'm on this shit and, like, you know, train and master on and diving and doing cardio, I should be able to get lean. You've yeah. never used, like, an ECA stack either? No. No. Huh? No. Use the Fedrin, like because I have access to it, and but I would I would only use it like if I got sick and I wanted to train. <laughs> Broncos, <laughs> ECA, ECA. I, I I did it when I was natural, but once I once I I got on on stuff and I was using Clan, I never used it after. Yeah. Did you guys ever actually take the the aspirin for the ECA stack? Because I never did. Yep. I just always yeah. took the the E and the C. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Do yeah. any of you guys still take aspirin just for like regular health? I don't take one. No, I don't, I don't take it. I, I have before, but not anymore. Yeah, I think I, I used to take one because it was like a thing that you're supposed to do, like the baby aspirin. Yeah, but, baby aspirin before, before bed so you don't get a blood clot. Yeah, but, you know, I take Prindo pearls, and my doctor was like, you don't need to take both. Yeah. It was just extra stress on the gut, basically. Um, Cool. Yeah, I like Yohimbi. The one thing that I like actually is uh, putting the Yohimbi, um, what's it called? Uh, vaso burn from the mpa subs it's like a topical yohimbi uh basically you just put on your skin I, I put on my glutes every prep man i just <laughs> you guys know me like i'm obsessed with having these shredded glutes so just every morning i'm just slathering that shit and it burns man like i'll be sitting in my car just like the first week, I'm just like sitting in my car, like "fuck, why I do this." <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. You just, you just, you just cream your ass every morning. Yeah. Okay. That's. Yeah. You ever get that? You ever get that to do it? <laughs> uh, no, I don't think she would do it. No. No. I think she used it. Though. <laughs> she used That's it. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it, it really burns. That's the thing. like. It, it feels like it's working. That's why. Right. <laughs> too. Yeah, you'll sweat. It feels like it's working. <laughs> I don't know. If that's what I used to, like, I used to like on. put it. I used to put it like on my knees and my elbows on on prep, and I was like really brittle, and like it would like just keep my knees and my elbows warm. Well, wouldn't you get like? Wouldn't you like be scared that you get a little bit on your nuts and then it just burns your nuts? I've done that. But oh, that's what I'm, that's also what I'm touched, asking. A, yeah, I've touched my face and my eye. <laughs> So wait, I got a question. So do you put it on like the entire cheek or do you just put it on like the outer glutes? Like uh so I'll do like my my like the full cheek and the hamstring. So like how close to your butthole do you get? <laughs> like like almost almost all the way in. Almost Jesus Christ, bro. <laughs> just just where the posing trunks go. I gotta make I just sure. had to verify because I knew some of the uh the audience would probably be curious. Yeah. There's there's definitely a cutoff <laughs> point. Yeah. yeah. You gotta watch the butthole. You have to, yeah, yeah, definitely have to be very careful. Watch the butthole, watch the eyes. Yeah. You have to really wash your hands after. Robin, do you have an athlete code with them? I don't. <laughs> I should get one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to go train because I'm going to be late for supper. Yeah, sounds good, bro. Appreciate you sure. jumping on, man. Have a good workout. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Crush those legs. Uh, okay, let's move on. What? How do you guys keep your gains when you're off gear? I think it's pretty straightforward, but what do you think, Q? Keeping gains in your off gear, eating, train, uh, eating more. like eating big, eating a lot. Eating That's a lot. Like the number one thing for me. Um, keeping the protein high, eating a lot. Now I find when I'm off gear, I can't train as hard. Well, I can, but my recovery is terrible. Mm. It gets to a point where I just 
after a certain amount of weeks of training hard, I feel like I'm going to injure myself. So I usually back off the training a little bit, but I keep the eating right where it was peak off season and I'm able to progress pretty well. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. What about, what do you guys do? I generally got to scale the food back about like 10 to 15% just because my food gets way too high. Give yeah. my body a bit of digestion break that way. But I do pretty much the exact same thing, like probably an extra rest day a week. Uh, I try to keep the overall volume limited to like one to two working sets per exercise, uh, not get carried away with those. Make sure I can recover enough because when you're on gear, you're probably recovering after a couple of days. And when you're not, it might take three to four days after a really hard session. So I personally do pretty much the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. Right on. Yeah. yeah, same with me. Same with me. Yeah, I just uh, I just switch to like maintenance mode in my mind. So I just eat the same, uh, maybe just a little bit less, you know, obviously. And then I'll uh, in training, I'll just like, I'll basically just like stop training to failure. Like I still train hard, but like I'm just like okay, I'm I've been bodybuilding for like twelve years, whatever. I'm not. I'm probably not going to make progress if I'm not on gear. So <laughs> why would I train like? To, to make progress you know like when i'm just gonna my recovery is not there for it so i just like train with like a couple reps in reserve and give it like i because i'm also in the mindset too especially if i have like another off season coming up or a prep coming up like i want my body to be fresh you know so like i'm not gonna bury myself when i'm off gear and then i jump back on gear and i got like sore joints and shit you yeah. know what's, what's the point of that right? that's true yeah I, I would say that's definitely important is just watching your recovery Pretty much what you guys said. I mean, I just try to keep everything the same. I almost try to tell myself that nothing's really changed. Like, I'm still just trying to build muscle. And even though maybe I'm not doing uh, as much volume in the gym, I'll try to keep my weights the same at least. Like, at least if I'm, like, touching and, like, moving the same amount of weight, I'm like, okay, I'm maintaining my strength and my muscle mass. And I'll just keep telling myself, like, you know, I'm just setting myself up to grow, essentially. Like, if I can just maintain everything I have right now in terms of strength and power – then when I really like push it, I'll be able to use the strength and power and get bigger. That's basically just what I tell myself. And I'm like, Hey, you know what? Like, um, at the end of the day, like we have all this muscle and it's not going anywhere. So I don't like freak myself out or worry about it. That's the, the biggest thing is I used to maybe stress more coming off thinking like, Oh, I'm wasting time or not making progress. But I feel like, Hey, you know, like progress is not linear anyway. So this is just part of the prog part of the process. And I feel like just, you try to find ways to enjoy it. You know, maybe like linking up with a training partner or maybe like getting someone to train you once or twice a week just so you have like different workouts to play with. Just shit like that. And then you can like, oh, like before you know it, back to, you know, cycles, you know, cycle time again. You know, so that time passes anyway. So it's like you're just going to have to stay on your shit. You know, it's like that that time goes by. So what else are you going to do? You're just still bodybuilding. And I'm under the impression that you're still growing when you're like, especially if you're cruising, you're just not growing at a rapid rate. Yeah. So there's still a lot of muscle to be made. You might not be increasing like the size of your biceps or anything, but I think you're definitely hardening your muscles, creating more density during that time period. Yeah. And you're still, you're still training your, your like tendons and ligaments and joints and stuff too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's even what, um, remember we had Broderick on, he was saying like the best thing you can do, like when you're off, uh, when you're like, not on anabolics is just to load up with like all the peptides and shit. So your, your joints and tendons can like get really solid and grow. And then when you're ready to blast again, they'll be ready to like hold on to that new size and muscle, just a theory, but you know, it's just another thing that you could maybe play around with it. It's like, Hey, while I'm off cycle, it's like, maybe I can augment that by using peptides and you're like, Hey, you still feel like you're taking something. Uh, okay. What's the difference between a back offset and a drop set? The back off set is it's not right away. You give it time just like you give a regular set. Drop set is immediately after. Boom. Yeah. Back off set, I typically scale the weight back about again 15 to 20 percent, maybe as well. Yeah. Um, do you guys always do back off sets? Or not I shouldn't say always, but right now are you guys doing back off sets in your off season or are you just doing straight sets or what is it? Typically, I do at least one hard straight set with a couple force reps in it, and then I'll do one more working set that generally has an intense fire behind it. So I don't find there's a lot of room for backup sets 
in my training right now, perhaps when you're off, off is when I was utilizing them the most. Uh, essentially, you got that hard set in. Now you add in just like a slight bit of volume, not compromise any of your joints and tendons with that extra additional stress. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, for me, it's, it's just all like I go by feel 100%. Like mm -hmm. if I do my first working set and I'm like, okay, I can probably do that weight again, then I'll just do that weight again. But if I'm just like, okay, I'm not going to get like the same amount of reps there, then I'll just drop it back a little bit and then focus a little bit more on like, you know, slower tempo, maybe a little bit higher rep. And just just to make the most out of the the second set. What about you, Q? Are you using uh, back off sets right now? Right now, no. Right now, just straight to the points. Yeah. Hard set, and then that's done. But at times when I'm really, I, I'm just coming off the end of a cycle right now, so my body's a bit beat up. So mm -hmm. I've I've decreased the volume as much as I could. But mid cycle, I was. I do like two hard sets, a back off. Now it's just do my hard set, and then I move on to what's next. Yeah, that's that's what I'm doing too. I'm just doing the one the one hard set. Um, sometimes I'll do a back off, like you know, kind of like similar to Mo. Like I mean, I'm not planning for it necessarily, but if I was planning to do a back off set for like every single one, that would be a lot more volume than if I just did one. It would double the volume, right? So yeah. I think people um, they think that they have to do back off sets, but you don't. Like I feel like if you just do one hard set. It's good because you almost feel like, okay, cool. I'm like, now I can just move on to my next exercise and I'm fresh to go into that next one. Because I feel like you do a hard set and a back off set, you're fucking beat up. You go into your next exercise before you even get to the end of your workout. You're already like beyond dead. So I think mm. you have to manage that, right? Like if you're trying to grow, just fucking get strong as fuck. Like you're not going to get stronger doing a back off set, are you? It doesn't really <laughs> going down in weight. So, um, Let's see, are you guys using uh, EQ at all? Do you guys use EQ in, at all in the off season? I honestly, I really like it, but I personally haven't used it in like two, two and a half years. I just personally don't like the way my blood work looks when I run it. And I haven't ever since, but when I did run it, I saw really good benefit, like extreme level of fullness um i felt my uh, my appetite would increase as well straight through the roof but generally like blood pressure definitely increased as well red blood cell count hematocrit a little higher than i like uh which can be good for building muscle but at the same time for long periods of time this is a toll right yeah yeah it, it's too my blood pressure goes too high when i take that man like i'm on eq for like three weeks i'm like in the 150s like for sure on blood pressure so i i can't touch it actually uh, i'm using eq right now and i find it's actually keeping my estrogen low oh for sure oh, yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Absolutely. i didn't know that about eq though because i figured that it would be aromatizing but it's actually just it's almost like i'm not even taking ais right now because i'm taking the eq Dude, I just had a client that had to pull him off of AIs because he's taking like 650 milligrams of EQ a week. Yeah. This is a guy who like in the past had like bad side effects from like uh, aromatization. And this is the first time I've got him on like almost no AIs. He's taking like 25 milligrams of aromas in a week now. And this was a guy that was taking like um, like one milligram of aromatex a day at some points when I was coaching him like earlier. Yeah. That's crazy. So, so that's like that's beneficial, right? Because the guy's, yeah. blood, the guy's blood pressure is fine. Yes, for someone like that, it does make sense because it's actually more. Yeah, like you said, more beneficial, healthier, probably. Like yeah, yeah, yeah to totally. Take the the EQ and not take the AIs, than to yeah. not take the EQ and to take the AIs. So yeah, exactly. What about you, Q? Any Q, any EQ for Q? No, no. I think it. Would, the last time I used it, I was just a, a little more stressed out, like EQ mm -hmm. and MP. I'm not big fans of like the MPP is great for fullness. Yeah. But uh there's other there's other side effects that I'm not a fan of. Yeah. EQ, I just felt I would kind of go crazy sometimes. So I like, keep yeah. it, yeah. Like there's only a limited amount of stuff that I use. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're all at that point now, like in a sense, like it's like you just know what works, so you just run the same shit all the time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah um all right so what would you um say you got an, a severely overweight client what was the first thing you'd have them do someone comes to you they're like 300 pounds they're like over 30 percent body fat 
or more and they are like hey man like i want to compete and you're like all right like we got a long way to go what do you get them to do first they got to move more they got to start doing like more steps daily yeah. uh not necessarily go crazy in terms of like what a bodybuilding prep would entail but like it's going to be really hard for them to manage their appetite usually right away um so just moving more and then slowly eliminating some of those like tendencies like snacking late at night um binge eating uh those go hand in hand but the sooner they can mitigate those they'll see a great response right away and then you can kind of like teach them what it really takes to be a bodybuilder but that's definitely where i would start yeah that's good advice for sure would you guys add to that at all yeah, I think that, you, go, you go ahead, bro. No, no, I think I think it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward, pretty perfect. But yeah, but yeah, yeah. Well, I, I don't know. I would probably just get him lifting like three times a week, put put a bigger focus on cardio and movement, like Skylar said, and then just get him used to the same thing, like better eating habits. So, like, I would try to focus on like small, frequent meals because uh, just for like to keep him satiated, mostly, like you know what I mean. Higher protein diet, obviously um give them carbs when they train lower carbs on rest days and just try to fix their eating habits and, and reinforce the ideas that scholar said about you know cutting out the binging and stuff but also try to give them food in a way that they don't even really want to snack or binge because if they have to eat five small meals a day like you know when are you going to snack you could be dealing with somebody that maybe only eats two to three massive meals and snacks so it's putting them on a plan where they actually are allowed to eat say five times a day even if one or two of them are rather small, it's going to help crank that metabolism up and just get them processing everything more efficiently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With those types of clients, like you got to read into like their psychology a little bit. Like if they're nighttime snackers, like I love giving those types of people uh, like their last meal, like a protein shake and like three or four rice cakes with a bit of jam and peanut butter. Like, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Cause it's like, they have that like kind of extra volume from that type of meal, but we also, we know it's lower calorie, but it has that like snacky feel to it. Cause mm -hmm. it's crunchy and sweet and salty. And just like, that's something I use for so many people and it, it works like a charm. And then like those Ninja creamies are, are a, a huge asset too, to those, these types of people who need something sweet before bed, you can give them like, you know, 200 calorie creamy for their last meal. And they're sitting there eating it for like 40 minutes. Cause it's so much volume, mm -hmm. you know, this, those little tricks, I think go a long way with these types of clients, you know? Yeah. I agree with that. I, mean, I think I saw some people online saying that they're like making videos about how it's like, you know, if you have like, sweeteners in a diet or like uh you have like things that taste good in your diet it's gonna like perpetuate like your desire for like sweet things and stuff and that can be challenging for people who have cravings but i feel like that's kind of like total bullshit because i feel like if you take someone like that who's got all these cravings they're used to having like all this delicious food and you just put them on a clean diet they're gonna fucking hate that shit so they're gonna end up like going through like the cycle of like hating what they're doing binging hating what they're doing binging but like you said, Mo, if you can just give them like little tricks to like constantly like keep them happy, like like spike their like uh, serotonin, dopamine, like when they eat, like actually tasting good. So they're always looking forward to the next meal. And then, like you said, like it's keeping them like somewhat full, but then also you know giving them like the taste bud, checking the taste buds. I think that would be a really good technique. Like just going from one extreme to the other is going to be way too hard. So you're going to have to guide them over time. It's going to be a fucking long process. But if this person's committed, then I think it would be like one of the best transformations you'd ever fucking have. So that would be super cool. Now, I wanted to ask you guys, what do you think about using uh, Ozempic or like the terza, Terzepatide for these people who are like binge eaters or emotional eaters or like eating disorder type people? Do you think that it can be beneficial for them? Do you think that the, the pros would uh, outweigh the cons for someone yeah. like that who's like a... I think if I think if their health is at risk, yeah, like if they're three hundred pounds, you know, like like, if you had some guy who's like literally on the verge of like a heart attack, and like he can't stop eating, like fire that guy up with those epic man. I think a lot of people are like that, man. You know, it's like yeah, hundred percent because it's like if you know if this guy's like going to pop, and then you can at least do six months of those epic, get a bunch of weight off of him, yeah. and then help him come off of it and be like, listen, bro, like this yeah. is what's going to happen. This is going to be super difficult because your appetite's going to come back like a motherfucker. And we got to like control that shit so that you don't gain all that weight back. That that's probably one situation where I would do it. But for the most part, I would really try to avoid because of the it, it's, it's detrimental long-term, you know? Yeah. 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 I, I know like I have like a friend who's like, 
he's just like he, he always tells me like he wants to lose weight but he's just like he's a food guy he's been raised in a family that they all are basically overweight and they all eat like every weekend like that's like the thing like big food family and like and the guy can eat you know he's got an appetite I'm like wondering like maybe it would be worth it for someone like that to use it um because he just can't seem to stop otherwise you know almost like a in last the, resort you know in the short term to help them develop the better habits it can be extremely beneficial i just don't see it uh benefiting bodybuilders at all really i agree but for yeah. people who can't control their appetite a short term absolutely yeah if you need that shit to diet as a bodybuilder you shouldn't be bodybuilding I agree, man. <laughs> it's not even that bad. <laughs> you still get to bad. eat like six meals a day. And whatever you're in prep mm -hmm. for four or five months, like it's like, okay, dude, like the food's yeah. gonna be there after you're done. Like fucking relax. Holy yeah, shit. I know. I know. That's craziness, eh? <laughs> yeah. Uh yeah, let's do one more. Do one more. Yeah, one more is good. One more. I'm getting hungry, man. I'm looking forward to this Greek food. Oh, it's it's good. Quentin, you like it last week? Yeah, it was really nice. Yeah, nice. what'd you get? Uh, the beef, so, something steak, some sort of steak. Ooh. You, you not know how to say souvlaki? Is that uh, what it is? Yeah, he doesn't know how to say yeah. it. Souvlaki. There you go. Yeah, the beef, yeah, beef souvlaki, that's what it was. It was really good. <laughs> Did you get the rice and potatoes? Rice and potatoes, my friend. Fucking A, boy. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, oh, this is a good one. Okay. There's this uh, thing with the insulin in the morning before you do your cardio. You guys heard of this? No. Some coaches. Stupid, right? <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> Tell me. It's crazy. So there, there's coaches that will use insulin for fat loss. Example, driving blood glucose down to stay in a fat-burning state. So what's the protocol? You take Humalog and then go do cardio? <laughs> I don't know the exact protocol, but I think it was like I've, I've actually heard someone say that it was like maybe like one IU and then you do cardio. <laughs> and I, I saw the protocol. It was essentially wake up, check your blood sugar. And if it's not, it was either not above 4.5 or if it was above 4.5 or 5, then you take one or two unit of insulin and then you check it again in 20 minutes and watch it drop. And then you do your cardio when it drops, which pretty reckless. <laughs> yeah. So do these people know that when you do cardio, regardless of your blood sugar, that you burn like calories, <laughs> like, <laughs> like that still works. Like, and your blood sugar is going to drop from the cardio too. So I would assume if you're dieting and in prep, like your blood sugar is going to be like, I mean, if you, you know, unless you're eating too much when you just, I, just, I couldn't make sense of it at all, to be honest with you. <laughs> I, I think the, ben the, the idea was that it's creating like a super physiological response and making the cardio more um efficient but at the same time the risk is, is not a way the reward like it's yeah, too risky. what happens right so like you're fucking on a treadmill and like you overshoot it a little bit and you go hypo and then you gotta drink some orange juice or some shit yeah and so you don't die and then it's like okay well now i'm in a fucking calorie surplus like yeah <laughs> like I, that's, what I was, that's what i was thinking i'm like imagine being the coach that prescribes this to his athletes it's like you're gonna get like 16 messages a day like hey coach I went hypo during my cardio, so I had to smash a protein bar. What do I do now? <laughs> You're like, oh, shit. We'll be like, all right, all right, all right. Two more units and then back on the fucking Stairmaster. <laughs> <laughs> you got to do it again. <laughs> That's brutal, man. I don't know. I feel like if your coach is getting you to do insulin when you're on a contest prep, you should probably fire him. Ooh. Insulin on a contest prep doesn't make sense ever, I don't think. I mean, I feel like Skylar might argue that. Do you do that, Skylar? <laughs> Maybe on a refeed day. He's there. I can see him fucking his mind going. Okay, well, like, I, there is a time and a place if it makes sense. Like, in my opinion, uh, on an average day in a contest prep, long-acting insulin doesn't make any sense at all. You're forcing a deficit. You're putting yourself at risk. And I've been in a situation where you're – coming out of an off season and you're using long acting and the food is gradually getting lower and lower. The long acting is gradually getting lower and lower as well. And you hit that point where you're like, I don't know if I should be pulling it now or not. And then you essentially get that bad hypo feeling and okay, now I'm at the threshold where I definitely don't need it anymore. Mm -hmm. But like personally for a lot of people, I see great benefit with running Humalog 
pre-workout in contest prep for a sustainable amount of time. Um, that being said, their carbs for the day might be tailored around just cost reduction pre and intra workout. But personally, I see a great response with that. But it's definitely uh, person dependent. That doesn't work across the board because there's some people that certainly need no intra carbs while they're in a contest prep, right? Whereas other people, I think that uh, me definitely, perhaps Quinton as well. And the intra carbs are going to help keep you full. And like when your body changes drastically, going long periods where you're not using intra carbs around your training can flatten you out really, really fast and just sacrifice the quality of the training sessions. And if I'm only going to eat, say, 200 grams of carbs in a day, but I can put 50 grams of uh, carbs pre workout, 50 grams of carbs intra, and my training is going to be amazing, then I'll take that every day. Right. Yeah, I would say the same. Like, in my opinion, um, like, for me, when I'm in contest prep, like, in my mind, my most important carbs are there, my intra-workout carbs. Yeah. Like, I, I would, I'll give up all my food before I give up those. Yeah, I, I'll definitely do the intra-workout carbs. I've honestly, like, last prep, this is why I don't think that it works for me at all. And, like, that's why I don't really agree with it anymore. Because we tried doing the pre-workout uh, hemolog, like, really small amounts. But I would always end up going hypo, always, every single time. Like, I would do, like, my first hard set, like, after a really hard set, I'd be, like, boom, without fail. I'd just be, like, drenched. Like, the pump would be gone. I'd be, like, cold sweats. I'm, like, god damn it. How like, close to your pre-workout meal do you train? Uh, Pretty close. Yeah, because I got to eat, like, 30 to 45 minutes before I train. Otherwise, it would probably be the same. But the way that me and my coach – build the plan was essentially eat on the way to the gym, drink pre-workout carbs, and then use the intracarbs, have enough humalog to cover what the intracarbs will require so you don't really ever go hypo. And then you're definitely, I don't do any post-workout cardio. If I was doing post-workout cardio at that point, you're definitely going to go hypo. Yeah. But it's just like essentially being prepared with your meals and what you need, and I'm usually okay with that. But it it's person dependent, right? You might have been ripping it, through it, carbs yeah. at that point. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't at think at what point me. did you take the at what point did you take the insulin though? Uh like uh, for me? You oh, scale, yeah. Yeah. Oh. oh, I literally do it like right before I train. Right before you train. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you'd already have the meal in, the pre workout carb shake. Yeah. Take take the insulin and then drink yeah. the workout carbs. So I'm covered around that and then the humalog would be based around how much I specifically need. And then I'd still be covered through the intra. And I, again, this was probably the first prep where I didn't see a substantial trail off in training ever. So that worked really well for me. Yeah. Yeah. See that that's why it didn't work for me. Cause I would go hypo and then immediately my performance would drop. Oh, um, of course. It, it was yeah. like really like annoying. <laughs> I'd be like, fuck. like I uh, happened on a leg day when I was filming and I was just like, this is so bad. <laughs> <laughs> but um you know live and learn right like at, at least we knew and um like one thing like the good thing about it was up until that point i felt like it did kind of help retain some fullness in my quads so i was using it before every quad day um but then once it got to that point like you were saying it's like okay i knew for sure that i needed to drop it so then i just you know took it out and then the other thing too was i feel like i've always just been more um like prone to going hypoglycemic so I've always got to be really careful with it. And some people, like you said, they're not, they're not as sensitive to it. So, um, oh, this is a good question. Okay. One, one more question. Uh, who's got the cutest dog on the podcast? Oh, got the cutest dog. Uh, Gus is pretty cute. Yeah. Gus is cute, man. Yeah. Cute. He's, he's, Skyler, he's you have a dog, Aesthetically right? pleasing. Yeah. Yeah. I got a French bulldog. His name's Debo. Oh, Debo. That's a good name. Tyler's got, Tyler's got a cool dog, too. He's, he's a little ugly, but he's cute, though. Yeah. He's got an alien head. Yeah. <laughs> we all have good dogs. All dogs are awesome. Yeah. All They're dogs all are cute, man. Dogs. All dogs are cute. Yeah, all dogs are cute in their own way. Yeah. People are going to be like, oh, what a Canadian answer. They always say that. Hey, fuck you, whoever said that. Yeah. yeah. Whoa, uh, very un-Canadian. Hey, oh, he's, he's really cute. <laughs> <laughs> Those big ass eyes, man. Yeah, <laughs> he, how, he can probably see really good. Oh yeah, twenty twenty vision. Yeah, yeah, he got like peripheral vision. Like he can see like <laughs> three sixty degrees. <laughs> <laughs> Deep. Why, why'd you, you name him? Here? He's like, why am I here? 
<laughs> Why'd you name him Debo? That's such a, that's such a good uh, name. He was the runt of the litter, and he was literally like half the size of his siblings. So I thought it would be hilarious if he had like a rather tough name. Yeah, that's so funny. <laughs> is that yeah. Debo from what's that? Is that Boys in the Hood? No, it's um, Friday. Oh, Friday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That Debo, Debo Samuel, too, is a good football player. Yeah. Yeah. Big Debo. Uh, all right, boys. Uh, so we are good for dinner. We're good for. Yo, we should do another podcast with this crew soon. This is a good crew. Big yeah, Q, sure, yeah. Big Skyler, Big Mo. Yeah, we gotta we gotta put Quentin in the group chat. I know. I will. I'll add him right now. Right. I'm right. just like yo Q. If you want to join, just join in. Like no pressure. Yeah, hey, glad you jumped on, bro. It's good to catch up. Like was. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll see you guys at dinner. Or? Yeah, okay, we'll see you guys at dinner. All right, take it easy, boys. Easy, boys. Make sure you subscribe, yeah. Kenny and Beef, all that good shit. See you guys in the next one.